Elisha Sorkin. <laughs> Rushing ahead, what a save! Ilya Sorokin. Check it on loads, glove save Sorokin. Are they not getting through? No, sir, not one. They must have some kind of protective shield over that hall. Knights, pull up, pull up! Got you covered, Big Daddy. Hughes has it, slot, big stop, rebound, oh, just stricken. Damn, they got shields too. And that's going to do it. So the Islanders, yep, surgical for sure. Who pulls back-to-back -back shutouts. So you get nothing. You lose. Good day, sir. You know, I spent all afternoon making that, and then I never put it on at the right time. <laughs> so, that was, but that was awesome. So we're going to be – this is going to be a theme for the – basically – both teams right now. I mean, going are forward, they just being yeah. carried by their goaltenders, guys. I mean, I, I I don't think one team is going to be carried by its goaltender. I I think one of them will be for sure. That's the boys in blue and red. Uh, the boys in blue and orange have a real good coach and a real good system to fall back on. It's the other one's still learning it, but yeah, yeah. The, the 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 other one. I mean, listen, it's an adjustment period. The Gallant, I, I will say that, but there are some fundamentals that need to be fixed. But to get back to the goaltending itself, I mean, both of them have been great. Um, Igor Shosturkin, I'm, since we're on the Rangers right now, we'll we'll talk about Igor, but he's been phenomenal. He wasn't helped out in Calgary on Monday, but he he was phenomenal in the the three four games before that. So. Um, somebody should be getting this man a stake in every city that they go to because he's deserved it. He's carried the team. And they need more. They need more. The offense needs to step up and start giving him some support and, and giving them something to work with. And, and they have to, to, to get the puck out of their zone effectively. The, the face-offs, the, the, I mean, 31st in the NHL, it's unacceptable. Un unacceptable. You can't, you can't do that. I I if I don't know where he is right now or what he's doing with himself or he's, if he's completely disconnected from the game of hockey itself, but somebody freaking call Yannick Perot up and have them work with the Rangers on taking faceoffs because that guy was a beast at faceoffs. He was sixty plus percent almost every year for like a, a, a like a six seven year span or something like that. Get that man in and have him work with the Rangers. It just again like, like Dave said. Too many turnovers. That doesn't help. But get Igor some help because all he can do is just be a wall. Yeah, no soup for us. No offense for us, Ranger fans, because there's only been one game in which they've scored three or more non-empty net goals in regulation this season. Pathetic. I mean, uh, again, uh, sometimes... Like I, I referred to him in the preseason, Artemi Panarin is the ultimate deodorant. Well, so can Igor Sesterkin be. And in hockey, you're in that unique situation where the goalie can literally just lift the team up when, when they're not playing at their best. And yes, Patrick Nemeth has been a huge Awful. problem, a Awful. huge problem so far, but he won't be forever. Although he's got a three-year deal. Let's just be honest. He's another Brendan Smith. The bad version, no, not the, the version that was actually – had some had some value. But, um, I mean, you look at the game on Saturday. Uh, Georgia was okay. Those two no, goals Georgia were was good in that bad. game. Well, the, the goals were not good. But No, the second goal wasn't good. The first goal, really, there was nothing he could do about that one. He, there was a, it, was a, it was an odd man rush. But the, the second goal, what was that? Come on, man. Yeah, I mean, that's – and especially when it's right in the, the beginning of a period. But the Rangers came back, and you know how much how much of a rarity that is to win a game in regulation? Got the I got the graphic for you right here. I mean, it's only happened uh, eight times before this since 1999 to be down by two goals in the final five minutes or six minutes and win in regulation. So – but that's just not it. Uh, but the thing also to look at right now is this Jacob Truba quote, and I'm going to throw it up right over here as well, uh, that the team feels a little bit more comfortable. And I think that's, what's going to go a long way. Eventually 
that they're able to make mistakes and stuff like that. It's just they well, yeah, need to Quinn micromanage them. <clears throat> Sorry, what I said, Quinn micromanage them. That yeah. you can't do that, and, and you can't tell players don't play with the puck in your backhand or don't don't stick handle at all on a two on one. Like what? Uh, what kind of garbage? Like amateur level coaching is that? Well, again, that's where you're confident with having a Jack Adams trophy winner. So I'm going to bring in the opinion of the guy who also has a Jack Adams trophy winner on his bench, Anthony LaRocco. Yeah, so the, the Rangers, you look at the record, um, and as a Ranger fan, you got to be happy at this point. But if you got, if when you look at the big, the bigger picture of it, though, they beat a Montreal team that's that's really bad right now, guys. They beat a Maple Leafs team that's also struggling mightily. They More beat, on that later. They beat a bad Nashville Predators team, and they beat a bad Ottawa Senators team. But, you know, they say good teams, you got to win the games you're supposed to, and they did that. My issue with it was for a majority of those games, they were carried by Shesterkin. And I don't know how sustainable that is over a long course of the season. It's not. It, it's not, and it has to change. Um, and the other thing is, Zabenejad's got a decent amount of points, but he's got what six, seven points in six games or something along those lines. That but he only has six four. points, a goal, and five assists. So he only has one goal, though. I mean, for one of your better goal scorers, you got he's got to start scoring. He's got to put the pucks in the net. And Artemi Panarin, Artemi Panarin is an elite player in this league, um, and right now he's you know he's not playing like it. So yeah, they 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 got the good record right now. That that's good, but there there are issues behind the scenes that the casual fan might not see and just you know jump for joy with their you know four two and one or whatever they are. But um, there are some issues they got to clean up. And first and foremost is the their best players have to be their best players, uh, and they can't leave Shesterkin you know out to dry all night because as good as he is, you know he's not going to shut the door every single night. So. Um, you know, it's some. I'm I'm confident Panarin will find his game. I'm not really worried about that. Um, for me, it's more so their their transitioning game uh, that concerns me. Um, and someone's been reading my good, bad, and ugly. Yeah. And I've also I've also caught a bunch of their games too. And I mean, honestly, you're you're spot on there. Um, and then overall, they're 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 playing the defensive zone. I mean, we all point out Nemeth and Tenorti, uh, but they all got to oh. be better. By the way, if you haven't uh, checked it out yet, check out our Facebook page, either our fan page or our, um, our group page that we got, and check out Filk's Good, Bad, and the Ugly. He'll do that after every single Ranger game, win or lose. And yeah. uh, Monday was a lot of ugly. So, Yeah, there was no good or bad on Monday. There was just all ugly, and it was <laughs> ugly at that. So... But Anthony's right. Um, the transition game is something that I've been pointing out all season, all over Twitter. I, I've had this discussion with many people, and the transition game is awful. I, I don't know how this team is so bad in transition. Transitioning their puck out of the zone, their breakouts are horrible. The, the passes simply just don't connect for whatever reason. So a, a lot of times they'll either they'll miss the connect on the pass – and it just results in a turnover, the other team having it and going back the other way, which results in more sustained pressure in their own zone. Or they turn the puck over, which is even worse, in their own defensive zone. And that leads to more chances against. And you know, like you said, uh, Artemi Panarin, Igor Shesterkin, the ultimate deodorants. You can only use so much deodorant until that smell starts to reek through. And <laughs> that's basically – it's basically what happened – uh, in uh, ca uh, against Calgary on Monday, it just you can't keep doing that. This play is unsustainable. All Ranger fans who have been around long enough, this is the 2015 2016 team all over again. And someone told me that, well, you can't compare the two teams because the 2015 16 team was a veteran team that a lot of guys were starting to go into the back nines of their careers. Well, no, because they're doing the same exact things that that team was doing, they were turning pucks over. They weren't getting enough offensive uh, zone time. They weren't generating enough chances. Power play is piss awful again. Uh, I mean, I don't understand how this power play is as bad as it is, but I, I think we need to see Mika Zibanejad move from that near side board for that one-timer in that Ovechkin office. I think he needs to move to the bumper spot 
Artemi Panarin needs to go from what Ryan Strom's spot was over to uh, Mika Zibanejad's Alexander Ovechkin spot. Uh, Alexia Lafreniere needs to be where Artemi Panarin is now. And then Chris Carter needs to park his ass in front of that net with Adam Fox at a point. So uh, there's a lot of things that are wrong with that power play. There are a lot of things wrong with transition. Um, They're just too sloppy with the puck. And they refuse to seem to kind of want to dump and chase against teams that are preventing them from gaining any type of speed or momentum through the neutral zone like Calgary did on Monday. So that that's got to change. And that's a mentality change. That's not even just coaching. That's the players that's on the players to do that. Well, first they're not playing their best hockey and they got points. That's the good thing I have to say out of that. Uh, you still have to be confident that Gerard Gallant is going to address these things because he's done that in his previous locations. Yes. I believe the the first season that Florida really broke out. That. They, um, that. Yes. That. As a matter of fact, they don't. Oh, that's got to change. That's got to change. The first season that they broke out in Florida, they started slow and then built it up. And then they had the statement win against the Canadians. Um, the... The other thing to throw in there is it's almost better when the team struggles because then there's more stuff to coach on. I think John Tortorella said that once. And uh, th- there's there's a lot more to go with that. So they're going to be, I think they're going to be okay. I think they need to address certain personnel situations because the question still is, is Filipino long for this team? I've seen flashes and it's just, I don't know. I think they may need to, to, to move him out, but we're going to find out about that. Anthony, you know last word on this. Oh, wait, Can we answer on. this? Because I, I know it's not Q&A time, but I, this is actually a really, really good question from Chris Tate. Um, I, I don't get it. I, I, and I, I know I've said this in here, and I'll give Statboy Steven the credit because he was the one that brought it up, even though I've kind of done it so in the past on my own. The last forward that they've developed that has scored 60 or more points with this team is Tony Alante. Like, yeah, that's a long, long time. That's almost 30 years ago. So, yeah, why I mean, you could it? argue Adam Graves developed with the Rangers, but still. No, he wasn't drafted by them, though. Yeah, he was still with Edmonton first. Yeah. But there's, there's no, there's he not was with Detroit before Edmonton. You, you can see the look in my eyes. It, it's been a while. I mean, Ryan Callahan. Maybe. No, Ryan Callahan never hit 60 points. Never, No, but still never hit 60 points. But still, that was a quality forward that they developed. I mean, Chris Kreider hasn't turned into the 30-goal, 60-point scorer that you know everybody hoped he could be. There's been nobody that's done that. And, and this team has had such a problem developing forwards. I just don't get why either. I, I don't can, get it. It doesn't make any I sense. I can question all the players, period, that they haven't developed. Forwards, goaltenders, everyone. Who are the two best players that they've had over the last 30 years? Brian Leach and Henrik Lundqvist. And really, they 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 really barely developed Leach. He was at Boston College, and then he came over, and he was just great. And then Lundqvist had most of his development in the Swedish Elite League. So, all right, Anthony, your thoughts on the Rangers? What's gone right and what's gone wrong? Um well, Christy posed that question. I was glad because uh, speaking of developing forwards, I, I need to see more from Lafreniere. Um, I need I need to see more from him. Um, yeah. You know, I, I I'm with you. listen, his second well, year. Player, by the way, Anthony, that's a quote that he had. Alexei Lafreniere points the thumb. I have yeah. to do the same things every game, be more consistent. It's really on me to do that. Yeah. I mean, listen, it's a second year player, so I'm not ready to like, you know, throw him away by any stretch, but um, for first overall pick, um, he, you, you typically want to see more flashes of, of brilliance out of him um, or that, you know, that real offensive flair and you, ha- and you haven't, you haven't really seen it. Um, I know, I think some people, I don't know if some people are expecting him to be like a generational player, which was never the case. I don't know why some people would have even said that. Um, I saw someone on one of Filk's threads. I don't know if it was the Facebook account or Twitter talking about that. And it was and never said about Facebook. It. So if you have, if you have that kind of expectations going in, you're going to be more disappointed than you even, you know, are right now. Um, 
But yeah, you know, he's listen. He's got he's got to be better. I mean, you invest when you get a first overall pick, you really need to hit a home run there. And don't get me wrong, he still can be, but he needs to start showing more. And, and a yeah. second overall pick. Don't forget yeah. about Kako. Yeah, well, he's been, still out on Kako. Yeah. And well, yeah, we talked about that in the summer. You know, granted, he's been hurt. The three games he's played, he hasn't got a point, but you know, he's been hurt. So we'll see what happens when he comes back. But yeah, I mean, the both of them really have really have to step forward because I mean, it, you imagine if they don't. A first and second round pick that you missed on. I mean that that's that's really hard to recover from. Um, but and when I can say we're not at that point yet, but they really do need to start producing more offensively. The other thing I always bring up in situations like this is if you trade away player X, let's say for instance they trade away Vitaly Kratsov and he doesn't blossom, then you have to start questioning the talent evaluators who looked over and said, that's the guy that I want instead of another a player Y, like Oliver Wallstrom, that we're going to see plenty of. It's just, or Noah Dobson, or, I mean, there's, the list goes on. I mean, uh, Marty Natchez is another one that you just, you look over and go, that guy could have been a Ranger. But somebody saw something, Gordy Clark, and said that's the guy we, we should make the decision on. So that's why you, you Nils Lundqvist better come through. Um, and I'm not saying the player needs – this is the pressure on the player, more than it's a pressure on the scout and the front office guys that made that decision. Certainly not the player. But uh, we're going to keep talking Rangers for another few more minutes. we got a guest coming on in a moment. Uh, it's Darius Kasparaitis. Hopefully my friend Russ is watching. And that was his favorite player growing up, <laughs> yeah. but, which again, one of the funnier stories to tell about him was uh, uh, he called me up the day that free agency happened. And he was like, Casper signed with the Rangers. Casper signed with the Rangers. And he was a little bit in tears. And I was, I was, uh, I was kind of smiling about that. I'm like, ah, your pain. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, this is another good one from Chris. We don't know if it's the talent evaluators or if it's in-house development, but you, you, he's right. We, we we don't know if it's just – because that, that's been the issue with Vitaly Kravtsov. The whole the, – the discussion comes down to did they – did they miss the per, – did they miss the, the character defects with him or did they take the risk – knowingly take the risk on it and they just couldn't develop him right and handle his personality? Either way, it's a bad look on the organization both ways. So, um, I, I just it, it this is just a really good point that I wanted to bring up. I, while I we're think still... that's a great point, and what I'm also going to go with for that is if they're going somewhere else and developing, then it's just the development. If yeah. they're going somewhere else and they're still not avail- developing, it could be then just the talent evaluators. evaluators. Yeah, it could also be both. Yeah, Let's it be could be about that. Yeah, and, and and you know what? It's funny because they they can Nick Bobrov, who made what we all thought were some really good picks with their European guys, and Nick Bobrov. If you guys are familiar with him at all, I actually met him at the uh, the 2019 uh, prospect meet and greet um, up in uh, the city, and I was talking to him for a little bit about some of the guys. Good guy, really, really nice guy. But Nick Bob. Bobrov was the one who found guys like David Krejci and a lot of those guys for Boston in the early to mid 2000s. Yes, Mark Savard was traded stupidly away. They just and there were signs from Mark Savard and they gave up on him for whatever reason. I don't know why they did. That was just dumb. He would have helped them out so much. I and sorry about the dead air for a second. No, it's no, just, no. It's it's one of those things and we're we're still killing time waiting for Darius Kasparitis to get on in here. Um, yeah, I mean, Anthony's I don't watching like a hawk, yeah, fortunately, as we're babbling on like idiots. But it's <laughs> it's one of those things where they could have had – and Nick Suzuki too, by the way. They, both of them could still be the problem. One of them could be the problem, but you also don't know. I mean, David Quinn, we're, we're all blaming David Quinn – Soon, the, and again, take Lafreniere and Kako and shove them out because those were the no brainers. They were central scoutings, number one and number two. So it wasn't going to be that. The Rangers weren't going to pass on Kako for Kirby Doc. It wasn't going to happen. Um, 
or even Quentin Byfield for Alexei Lafreniere. But it's just these guys, once you get the talent, what are you going to do with it? You can't just put them on the fourth line and have them play with Brett Howden and, and go, don't worry, you'll do a little bit of an NHL work. But, and power play one is one of those guys has got to make it the power play one. Now, also, by the way, please, to, to the players, jump up and take that spot. Alexei, you've got to do that. You've got to go up and be just, just play so well that they can't help but give you more ice time. That's the only thing that you can ask for him to be. Oh, I mean, yeah, because if, if he doesn't, then that, that really hurts the Rangers offensively and their, their forward group. You know, that's what we talked about um, a couple of weeks ago. You know, we're talking about the downside to this, you're relying on so many young guys, you know, if, because if they don't, if they don't play the, to their expectations, you know, that, that hurts your team big time. And it magnifies even more when your best player or Tammy Panera is currently, you know, in a slump or whatever he's got going on. So um, it's imperative for, for, you know, them to really start to come through here. And it's also imperative that Mika Zbanejad gets going. And as we saw what happened last year, the Rangers kind of went as Mika went. Yeah. I'm like, the, you know, right now the guy's got, you know, one goal. I mean, I know he's, he's got the points, he's getting some assists, but you know, he's in, Let's call it. He's their best goal scorer. I mean, he needs he needs to he needs to score goals. I I, I you know me. I, I'm I'm the cynic. I can be the negative one, but I will play devil's advocate here. Mika Zibanejad has not gotten help from Chris Kreider. Chris Kreider, being the, the having four goals this season in what seven games, and the way that he's gotten them is the most Rangers thing ever hashtag that's so Rangers because Chris Kreider would do that. And he, cause he's played like an absolute ghost this year. He's been, he's been a ghost. Like if it wasn't for the four, if it wasn't for the four goals that he's gotten on all deflections, by the way, he hasn't gotten a goal on a single shot. Um, you wouldn't know that Chris Kreider has even done anything this season because his play away from the puck has left all of the world to be desired. <laughs> so Chris Kreider not helping him. Alexi Lafreniere not playing well and helping me because advantage Ed hasn't helped either. They haven't been able to put someone like Vitaly Kravtsov, who would have been, up, I would have said in terms of style of play, would probably be the closest thing to Pavel Buchnevich that they would have had in the organization. So that could have been a decent fit there to help out, to you know someone that could drive the play a little more. Because they, they really don't have a play driver on that line right now, aside from Mika. They need a second play driver on that line because Mika's advantage at is not – he's not a facilitator. He's a goal scorer. And that's why Pavel Buchnevich worked so well with that line. So yeah. – and then not, not only that, but Artemi Panarin, okay. I know he played with Mika's advantage at for the first six games of the 1920 season. And then they split that line up after the loss to Vancouver in the sixth game. Then they went with that Buffalo game and on and with Strom and Panarin. Strom was out, obviously, COVID. Kako's been out. So Panarin really hasn't had anybody to work with because Filipino does not look like he's a top six forward going forward. And I know it's kind of early to say that, but I haven't gotten any flashes or indications that he's that guy. He looks like he, he probably belongs on the wing if he's going to be in a top six role. So Artemi Panarin, you got to give him a little bit of a pass. But at the same time, when does this start to become a major concern? I think the concern is that he's a minus four right now. Yeah. He's been a plus player for a while and a very good defensive guy. Um, I was hoping Kreider was going to keep on scoring. So that way I could say to you, Kreider's on a pace for 82 goals as he was uh, up until last week. But uh, not so much now. And, you know, it's a problem when you don't play with the puck. The, sometimes the puck doesn't find you. You got to go get it. Okay. If so you're not going to have it, you got to go get it. I'm not a fan of Kreider. Okay. But what has he done away from the puck? Can can either of you tell me what he's done away from the puck? Bobby, can you tell me what he's done away from the puck? He's what, had he's some, he's had some what is he doing? What, actually, can I ask you this, Phil? Saturday, yeah. the hit uh, on, I think it was Josh Norris. 
at the yeah. very end? Yeah. Would you have suspended him? That's a close call. I, I mean, it's a dangerous play. It's a, it's a dumb play. It's a dumb penalty to take. He's lucky that there was only 10 seconds left in the game. But if they would have tied that game, Chris Kreider would have been crucified by this entire fan base. And that's the thing. And Anthony, look, not much. What has Chris Kreider done? Where is the forechecking, though, Bobby? I don't see it. I don't see it. Anthony, do you, do you see forechecking from Chris Kreider? Mark? No. Like, I mean, listen. Four, you four checking me, should be his forte. It's, yeah, it's, and, it's and, been a little, a little bit lacking this year. Yeah, and, and he needs to be better off the puck. When Chris Kreider is not scoring goals this year, he's not doing anything. He's not doing anything. He needs to do more. He needs to be more engaged. There All is right. Chris, so. Well, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna wrap this up anyway, because uh, we'll move on. We'll start talking about the Islanders. Hopefully, uh, we get Darius uh, before that segment. But guys, what do you think about the, how the Rangers have gone? Uh, four straight wins, all on the road, mostly on the back of Igor Zesterkin with that force field that he has around the net. I'll uh, Independence Day. Please don't get a virus, just like in the movie, and <laughs> and stay away from the cars with Booch. That would also help. Uh, that, um, are the Rangers off to a good start in your opinion? Throw them all down in the comments below. And, um, I think they're going to, they're good. They're still going to get better guys. I don't just have to worry about that. If you like that video, we got a lot more. So check out any of these that are right over here. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hmm, your ideas are intriguing to me and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter.